In the previous video, we were doing looking up percentiles based on z-scores that we calculated from data points. Now we're going to go backwards. So what if they give us the percentile and want to know the data point? I'm just using the same picture we had from before. So what we would do <clears throat> is instead of looking up the z-score on the table, we'll look up the percent on the table and substitute the z-score, the mean, and the standard deviation in the equation to solve for x. That sounds like a lot. So um, this is what we're going to be using and the table and luckily also the calculator. So if I was looking for 0.9641 or 96.41%, I would find it on the table and then I'd say, oh, okay, so that goes with 1.800. So the z-score still comes from the column head headings and the row headings. So let's take a look at an example so you can get a better feel for this. High levels of cholesterol in the blood increase the risk of heart disease for 14-year-old boys. The distribution of blood cholesterol is approximately normal. And it's a most time when we describe data, we're going to say approximately normal. We don't have anything really normal, just like your teacher's not really normal. And uh, in this case, the mean, and you notice that's called mu there, that symbol right there, is 170. And the standard deviation is 30. And we'll often write it in this where we say n for normal distribution, mean, and standard deviation. So we're going to go ahead and determine what q1 is. So they want to know what is q1. Well, if I had a box and whisker plot, this would be easy, but I don't. So we have a normal distribution. I can still calculate it. First of all, I'm going to use a table to look for the number percent closest to 0.25. So looking at the table, I see that 0.25 is closest to 0.2514. So there it is. And I'm going to use point, negative 0.6 and then put the 7 after the negative 0.6. So in this case, z is negative 0.67. Now I'm going to use the formula z equals x minus mu over sigma, or z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation. We're going to look back at these numbers, the 170 and 30. There's mu and there's sigma. So put in the negative 0.67 for z, the 170 for mu, and the 30 for sigma, and this is what we get. Now I don't like the 30 underneath there, so I multiply both sides by 30. I get negative 20.1 equals x minus 70. Then add 170 to both sides to get 149.9. So q1 in this case would be 149.9 milligrams per deciliter. Now, you can actually do this on your calculator. So how does it work? Well, first of all, you would press second and distribution. So you hit second, the blue key, and distribution. Then you'll see number three is inverse norm. Hit enter, and then put in the percentile. In this case, 0.25. All right, but wait, there's more. So normally, you would take this number, the negative 0.67, and go solve, right? Well, the nice thing is your calculator will actually spit out the x value for you. So let me continue to play this here. So instead of pressing enter, so we're going to do second inverse normal like before, put 0.25, but now we're going to hit comma, and then we put in the mean and the standard deviation, close parentheses, hit enter, and voila, there you have your x value. So you don't even have to go back and solve that equation. Now, when you're taking the AP test, you should really write down that equation so that they know that you know what that is. They're not real big on calculator speak, but basically go ahead and use the calculator to make your life easier. So let's revisit our sample with the cholesterol. Now we want to determine the IQR or interquartile range for the distribution of blood cholesterol. Now we already know Q1 is 149.9, mu is 170 and sigma is 30. Now, if it's interquartile range, the, the z-score is just going to be, Q3 is just going to be the positive of Q1. But if you're not sure, what you could do is go ahead and just go ahead, second distribution, do the 3, and then just put in 0 .2, uh, 0.75, because we're trying to look for that. All right, hit enter. So see, it's 0.67 for right now. Um, and if I take that 0.67 and substitute it in, 
and solve for x. So I multiply both sides by 30 to get this. Then I get 190.1. Okay. And so basically my interquartile range would be 190.1 minus 149.9. But you still could have used, instead of solving for, for x, I would still write this out on your AP test and on my test. Show me you know what you're doing and it's not just calculator speak. But you could have had it spit out the x value for you from the calculator just by doing the second variant which was the inverse normal and then 0.75 comma and then put the normal and the mean the 170 and the standard deviation and hit enter and you would get your 190. In this case, it's 190.2. Now, there's a reason we have some slight differences. Here I'm using 0.67 as the z-score, and you could see it was a little bit different than that. So there will be some minor variations, and when they're grading it, we can take that into account, both me and the AP test. But you need to show us that you know what you're doing. So what I'd like you to try now is there's a fast food restaurant has just installed the ketchup dispenser. The amount of ketchup dispensed by the machine follows a normal distribution with a mean of 1.05 ounces and a standard deviation of 0.08 ounces. Now suppose the manager adjusts the machine settings so the mean amount of ketchup is now 1.1 ounces. What does the new standard deviation have to be? Now this one's a little different because you're basically, um, you're not solving for x on this one. You're solving for the denominator. So it's a little bit of a challenge if you struggle with it. That's okay. We'll go over it in class. And go ahead and look at pages 115 to 117 in your book. They have some great, uh, some other great examples that are worked out. And if you have any questions, we'll 